Hello, and welcome to Three Plastic Surgeons and a Microphone. We are on show number 14 with my co-stars, as always, Dr. Salvatore Pacella from La Jolla, California. <coughs> His Instagram handle is at San Diego Plastic Surgeon. Dr. Sam Jajurikar from Dallas, Texas. His IG handle is at Sam Jajurikar. And I am Sam Ree from Paramus, New Jersey, and my Instagram handle is Bergen Cosmetic. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing on the moon, Dr. Pacella? <laughs> you're such a <laughs> you're, you're, remarkable technology has come along where we can see people from such a great distance. <laughs> I, I apologize. So here's the story behind this. Uh, I got a new laptop and I neglected to test the webcam until today. And it's right at the bottom of the screen. So if I adjust my screen, you can see my, my keyboard. It's terrible. <laughs> Laptop's great. But the one thing I look about, the one thing I like about it, despite the fact that I'm looking up at you, <laughs> is my neck looks fantastic. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> so I got to do one on, on Amazon so I don't have to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there, will, Prime. There, will be, there will always be something. <laughs> free free one-day shipping. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, All right, jokers. Let's get okay. started. All right. So, as always, this show is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is for informational purposes only. Treatments and results may be vary based on circumstances, situation, and medical judgment after appropriate discussion. <laughs> 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 Always seek the advice of your surgeon or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding medical care and never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking advice because of something in this show. And with that, we are going to talk about the top 10 myths about aging. This is a great topic. We're all very excited to talk about all of these, um, whether they are actually myths or not. So let's just get straight into it. So okay, number myth, myth. Let's start with myth number eleven. You you age less in space. Never look like, better, Sal. You look very youthful. <laughs> All right, that's <fantastic. laughs> All right, number ten. Skin creams keep your skin looking young. Now I cannot see the presentation. Are we supposed to be able to see? Oh it? shoot! All right, there we go. All right. Um, well, already, all right. I'm not sure this is entirely a myth in my in my estimation. I do think that a appropriate skincare regimen is important to prevent aging for sure. And so, usually, um, in my practice, I'll tell patients that involves a healthy dose of sun protection as they get into their you know early 40s. Uh, a retinol is really important. Moisturizers, exfoliation. Um, I think skin creams have a huge role, as, as we like to tell our patients, to protect their investment. Um, patients are going to have surgery um, to make themselves look younger. They're going to get fillers to make themselves look younger. But there is a huge role for skin care. But I agree, there is no fountain of youth. Skin creams do not make you look younger, but they can preserve what you have. Right. I think, you know, I think the key here is the is the sun protection factor. I mean, clearly, you know, we're all in areas that get a tremendous amount of sun and exposure to the world, uh, to exposure to the solar system. Particularly, uh, particularly without an ozone layer in space. space sun protection space is, is very big. important. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, obviously you're in Dallas. <laughs> Talk to Rhea in New Jersey. There's a lot of sun. I mean, you're you're Jersey Jersey folks. You know, you're getting a lot of sun exposure on the Jersey Shore, July to September, right? So, the Absolutely. SPF SPF factor is key, particularly here in San Diego, La Jolla. But uh, you know, when I when I go out when I travel to outer space, I usually <laughs> I usually use about a 200 SPF. <laughs> <laughs> So ridiculous. <laughs> a lot of good sound bites this episode. <laughs> uh, my audio cut out for about uh, 60 seconds there, so I missed a little bit of what Sam said, but uh, I heard the topical stuff. And um, yes, there's nothing that totally eliminates wrinkles, 
but I agree absolutely that all of these things uh, can be very helpful in per, uh, maintenance, prevention. That's the key. Uh, anything else? Let's move on. Uh, number nine, my face gets fatter as I age. Well, this is a myth, uh, pr provided you stay at the same weight. Now, my face actually is getting fatter as I age, but it turns out my whole body is getting fatter, so my face is not being spared. However, this is a very, very, very true uh, in terms of the fact that it's a myth. Um, as we get older, one of the biggest telltale signs of facial aging is loss of facial fat. And so whenever we are talking to our patients about how we, they get a more youthful look, it may involve facial fillers to actually add volume to the cheeks, to these folds, the nasolabial folds or marionette lines, um, to the jawline. So, so addition of fat can actually make you look or addition of filler can make you look more youthful. So this is a huge myth. I completely agree with this. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, so one thing I tell my patients in, in San Diego here is, is, you know, I give this analogy. If you look at a baby's face, a baby who's, you know, two years old, you see um, a tremendous amount of facial fat that's a sign of youth. But if you look at somebody who's close to 100, their face is very skeletonized, particularly around the orbit and the and the eye region. So that that can be very problematic. So one of the key concepts here is as we get older, we lose a lot of fat and we want to add that in, add additional fat in for facial rejuvenation. It's actually paradoxical. When you see older patients lose weight and get fitter, um, they actually, they complain their face looks older. Look older. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's uh, one of those uh, weird things that people complain about as they get healthier, that they look older. And then that's where we come in, where we help to try to rejuvenate that for them. <laughs> All right. Number eight, older patients, uh, older patients should stick to facial procedures, not body procedures. Um, well, well, I guess we're going to stick with the pattern of me answering first. So, um, uh, what, what I will say is, um, yeah, that, that's not remotely true in the 21st century. Patients are living older. Um, you know, the longevity of people is, is just extending as, as, um, as everyone's people seem to be taking better care of themselves. And, um, patient, you know, many of my patients in their sixties, even seventies are fit and they're healthy and, they, they live the way that people did in their 40s and 50s years ago. And if they are concerned about the way that their overall appearance looks, the body is obviously a very important part, part of it. So it's not uncommon to do liposuction, breast procedures, tummy tucks, body lifts, all of these things on patients that are in their 60s and 70s. Age is not a contraindication at all to having surgery. It's the existence of health problems, which are diminishing with increasing frequency in our, in our older patients. Right. And I think I think the key thing to keep in mind here is uh, from the expectation of the patient, you know, <laughs> as as we age, <laughs> excuse me, as we age, we our skin tends to lose a lot of elasticity. So a a procedure that's very heavily dependent on skin health and skin um, elasticity, let's say something like tummy tuck or breast lift, that's going to be a markedly different procedure in somebody who's 30 compared to somebody who's 70. So I think the key here to understand is although body procedures can be very helpful in, in older patients, the expectation is different because the skin's not going to lie as as uh, as as well as potentially somebody who's 30. So I think although you, you could certainly still be a candidate for body procedures, we have to we have to take those with a grain of salt. And that goes for the face as well. I think those are good so, points. So are you saying that you you tell your patients in their 60s and 70s to not have high expectations for the results? No, no. I think I think we have to understand. So, for example, a, a common discussion we have is is around tummy tuck. And, you know, in San Diego, we have a lot of fit older patients as well. But sometimes when you're super fit, you don't have a lot of subcutaneous fat and mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of elasticity in the skin. And so many times if we do, say, liposuction, that can create a situation where the skin may not retract as well as, say, somebody who's in their 30s. And so that can lead to some redundancy of skin. And so I think, you know, we have to understand that there's it, that liposuction is not going to do everything, particularly as you get older, when um, when your skin is not as elastic. I think it's just it's just a matter of 
the yeah. plastic surgeon <clears throat> really looking at the patient's skin and understanding with the patient just how much how much can be accomplished. So. Yeah, I think that's very, very true. You know, I do find that in those older patients, if we're going to stick with the liposuction example, I am more likely to use ancillary technologies with them um, where mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys are big fans of radio frequency in combination with your liposuction, but we use body tight a fair amount in our patients as they get a little bit older. Um, we're finding that in, at least with our patients here in Dallas, that if you can combine radio frequency with liposuction in some of these older patients, assuming they're not massive weight loss patients or have huge issues with their elasticity, we can get pretty good results. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys have that same experience or if you're more likely to use that or ultrasound or something with those patients or, or do you, do you not, do you just tell them, I don't think our results are going to be as good. Just curious what your, what your personal approach is. To that. Yeah, we don't, we don't use a lot of ancillary technology in my office. It's just, we don't, we don't have the ability to, to okay. do that. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's, it's a good point. I might, um, offers more of a skin excision uh, technique type of procedure. Say if I, like for example, someone who is just interested in arm liposuction and if they're say 65 versus 30, I might say maybe if there's a lot of skin laxity, we should consider a brachioplasty. Yeah. I, I, I think older patients, their scars tend to heal very nicely in a lot of cases. And um, that might be something that I would consider as well. I think you guys are so right though. And I think this has been a really interesting conversation in the sense that older patients, terrible skin elasticity compared to younger patients, and everyone has their own individualized approach in terms of how they deal with it. But um, but they can still get body contouring procedures as they get older. I think that's that's really the key. Absolutely. Number seven, the older I get, the less sleep I need. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think that's a true myth. I mean, I as I get older, I feel like I need more sleep, and sometimes I need a little nap in the middle of the day, just like I did in kindergarten. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> well, the older I get, the less sleep I get. I will say that. <laughs> um, um, you know, I think there again, there's a lot of good. Uh, good empiric evidence out there that at least from an aging standpoint, sleep is very important. Um, um, you know, in terms of preserving a, a less tired appearance, you, you, you obviously need to get more sleep. But um, I, I actually think that um, older patients in general do get less sleep than younger patients. But whether or not they, they feel good about it is a, is a totally different issue. I agree right. with you. Um, I think one of the right. biggest issues as older for older patients is, is that we may have a harder time, I put myself in the older category, older, harder time falling asleep. Um, and also a lot of us have insomnia, um, which is very common. Uh, and, but it is also true that we tend to go to sleep earlier and wake up earlier than say when we were 20s. Um, but I think the studies have shown adults, older adults still need the same amount of sleep every night, seven to nine hours. That's that's typical. But you're right, Sam, whether we actually get that, it's sometimes more difficult for us to achieve. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to I'm going to turn this into a little bit of a PSA here, which is, you know, I think one of the undiagnosed or underdiagnosed uh, problems that we have as we get older is is the presence of sleep apnea. And that's really a silent killer. And, you know, if I think it's important to understand what, as a patient, if you're having issues with sleep, you're waking up in the middle of the night, you're gasping for air. You know, as we get older, our neck gets thicker, our muscles get looser, and that can lead to a phenomenon of your jaw collapsing on itself. And that can cut off oxygen in the middle of the night. Undiagnosed sleep apnea um, can lead to heart failure disease, it can lead to other issues. So if you're having issues with sleep as, as you're aging, really a good idea to chat with your primary care doctor. Consider getting a sleep test. There are some small maneuvers, even if you diagnose with a little bit of sleep apnea, uh, things that, that can help with, with maintaining sleep. Mouthpieces, CPAP, things that, uh, you know, things around sleep hygiene, setting your phone down, avoiding blue light, et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. Number six, plastic surgery accelerates aging. Um, bad plastic surgery can accelerate aging. Um, and I think um, if you look at how we did, let's say, facelifts 
um, 20 or 30 years ago where it was all about tightening and removing facial fat. That was a true statement. Um, I think as we get smarter and we learn more about how the, 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 the we learn more about how people age and we're adding fat to people, plastic surgery does quite the opposite. Um, I think you guys would probably agree with that. Right. Um, I, you know, obviously my, my big interest in San Diego and Southern California is eyelid surgery. And, and I think no other area of the face illustrates this, the very much the flavor of eyelid surgery and cosmetic blepharoplasty back even so, so, uh, so short, like 15, 20 years ago is aggressive removal of fat in the eyelid, the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. And what we're seeing now is we've created a situation where a lot of these patients look really overdone, over-resected. The eyeball is hollowed out. You can see the bone around the orbit. And that's a, that's a real bad-looking plastic surgery job. That's, a, that's something that certainly is going to accelerate aging. So I, I can't agree more. I think when it comes to uh, fat in the face and around the eyelid, the key is manipulation of that fat and not necessarily man, uh, removal. I agree with both of you. It's um, natural results will help you in the long term. Um, as Sam said, exactly, black, bad plastic surgery, over tightening, um, a gaunt look, as uh, Dr. Pacella said, it doesn't play well in San Diego. It doesn't play well in Dallas. It doesn't play well in New Jersey. <coughs> All right, the next one, number five. The older you are, the less sex is important. <laughs> um. <laughs> Boy, who's gonna? I know, what you're, I, I know what you're gonna. I know what you're gonna. I know what you're gonna say, Doctor Sam. In, in Jersey. What is sex? <laughs> yeah. Give me the definition of sex. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think, in as you get older, um, human contact, intimacy, and all that is still very, very important. And personal body image issues that go along with that are obviously very important as well. And so I think, yeah, for all of my patients, intimacy is a very, very important thing in their lives. The frequency of it may not be the same. Um, it may not be at the foremost aspect of their minds as a, you know, as they were in their 20s and 30s. And maybe what they're trying to get out of it's a little bit different. But body image issues, overall appearance issues become very important. And they're very much tied into those intimacy um, factors. What what was that line from that uh, what was that movie years ago? Austin Powers, sex? Yes, please. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. So you know, sex, sex and intimacy is obviously a a a part of you know our health as human beings, and we don't want to ignore it as we age. How many? Just just out of curiosity, how many of your patients, starting in uh, in New Jersey with with Dr. Sam in New Jersey? How many of your patients come in are on some form of hormone supplementation or pellets, men and women, which in many ways is geared towards their, their sex drive? Do you, is it a high percentage that you're seeing? Um, I think for the ones that disclose, I think a lot of patients feel uncomfortable sometimes talking about that sort of thing. I would say uh, with the older men, um, more, I would say more than 50% of them are on some sort of hormone supplementation. I would say for the women, it, uh, it's hard to say. Um, I would say a substantial percentage of them for sure. Uh, but there's no doubt my older patients, they're the ones that are the most uncomfortable talking about it after a surgery, but they always um, will come up to me and say, you know, oh, by the way, Dr. Ree, when can I start you know, doing that again after my procedure. And so clearly for a lot of patients, it's something that is a big part of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would say that, uh, you know, a good, a good proportion of older men I see older being over 50 or 60 are on some sort of, um, assistance regimen, uh, Viagra, Cialis, um, things like that. Um, and I, I'd say a good, percentage of those that, that are on those medications are also on some sort of testosterone supplementation. And, but the, the broader picture is that, um, I think it's really related to understanding your, your own healthcare. If you have a, a primary care doctor or an endocrinologist that's tuned into these types of issues, 
chances are you're going to be on those medications. But quite honestly, many many primary care doctors are not necessarily tuned in. Sometimes, you know, in my experience, they don't even really order the correct test or breakdown of testosterone. You know, so so I think it's it's an important thing for health for sure. Yeah. I have a similar experience in Dallas. Men and women are, you know, I see a lot of hormone pellets, a lot of men on testosterone supplementation. And I think it just illustrates that even when there isn't that natural endogenous hormone drive, there's a lot of recognition from patients and, um, and, and their healthcare providers that these, uh, that intimacy is very important, even as we get older. And so um, there's, and, you know, you turn on the TV and you, you see all of the, you know, all of the, uh, the, uh, get Roman and, um, God, I can't remember the other ones, but there's just, so, it's such a big deal as we get older, um, that it just really illustrates that sex is very important later in life. Number four, the nose grows bigger with age. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to take this one because <laughs> arguably I have the biggest schnoz on, uh, on our podcast here. Um, there's no so argument. I think this <laughs> <laughs> See, I must be I must be the oldest. <laughs> I clearly must be the oldest. So uh, obviously, so this this is a myth. Um we we stop growing um at about age 18, 19. But that doesn't mean our bodies won't change and that's not attributed to growth. It's attributed to just the changes of aging. So for example, in the nose, we commonly see older patients that have an elongated nose or an elongated tip. Well, why does that occur? It's not because the nose is actually growing like Pinocchio. There is an attachment of bone to cartilage right at the base of the nose, somewhere right mid-nose. And as we get older, that loosens up substantially over time. And so you're actually seeing what you're seeing here is you're seeing the cartilage separate from the bone of the nose, and that's what gives the appearance of the nose growing. This also occurs in the ear, believe it or not. So in the ear, we have um, cartilage on the inside of the ear, but the bottom portion of the ear is not cartilage. And so you might see older patients that have these elongated lobes. So coupled with wearing a heavy, um, heavy earring and the loss of elasticity of skin coming off of that cartilage, that gives the appearance of your ears growing. So, yeah, couldn't agree with Dr. Pacella more. This is a technical myth. Um, the nose has stopped growing, but it definitely gets bigger because gravity is an inexorable, unyielding force. It pulls everything down over, over time, whether it's your nasal tip, whether it's your breasts, whether it's your earlobe, whether it's your tummy, everything stretches out over time. And so the nose is not growing, but it does get bigger with age. With that depressing note, let's move on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank God they're a plastic surgeon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Number three, it's too late to start exercising. Not a myth. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, let the exercise fanatics, because uh, every time I turn on my social media feed, I see Dr. Pacella doing push-ups. Um, <laughs> and Dr. Ree looks like he gets like, the incredible Hulk more and more every day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Dr. Ree in New Jersey, um, I'm curious to know your thoughts on, on this and what more specifically, what type of exercise as we age? Well, all right. So I'll get on my, uh, cross box, uh, CrossFit, uh, soapbox and talk a little Hold on, hold on. Time out. Remember the first rule of CrossFit. <laughs> Never stop talking about CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first thing I want to say for everyone out there is that I very, it sounds like I know with these guys, I push CrossFit all the time, but I don't. Um, in fact, I never talk about extra, like certain types of exercise with my patients. Um, and I, and I do that because I realize that everyone is in a different stage of their life. Um, if you talk to me, say 20 years ago about doing you know, high intensity exercise, I would have thought you had a hole in your head. There's no way. I mean, everyone is at different phases of their lives and it, you don't have to do anything if you don't want to, but there is good science out there that does suggest that no matter what age you work at, work out at, or begin working out at, you can find benefits. So maybe you never exercised in your twenties or thirties or forties, 
it's not too late to start in your 50s or 60s or 70s. Um, they did a study um, with men and women with an average age of over 80 years old who began working out. They started with weights and they increased their muscle strength by over 100% over That's great. Three, three months. And, you know, there's no doubt that major medical issues such as hypertension, heart disease, stroke, cancer, they're all reduced with exercise, even regardless of what age you start at. Um, for me, uh, I do believe that high intensity um, exercise, uh, similar to CrossFit, can provide a lot of benefit and doing a multiple you know, doing multiple types of exercises, so not just cardio, but weightlifting, you know, um, you know, things that are constantly um, challenging you can be very helpful. But I also realize with people's lifestyles, that can be a problem. So um, trying to fit that in. So regardless if it's if it's just walking a couple flights of stairs a day just to try to get started or doing P90X in your basement or whatever it is, um, Doing something uh, not only helps, but it makes you look better. And um, I can tell you that I've had a lot of patients that had never exercised before. They didn't like their appearance. They came and saw me. And plastic surgery plus their lifestyle changes, including exercise, made a big difference. So um, I think that's that couldn't be said better. That's fantastic. I mean, there's a huge benefit not only to your health, uh, to your uh, physical health, but to your mental health as well with exercising. So I think that's, that's key. Um, now let me ask you this question, guys. Um, you all are, you, you both are very active people and, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm in my late forties and, um, I definitely feel my body more than, than I did in my late thirties. And I have noticed this phenomenon for, for most of my friends about my age, it seems that, you know, most, most of my friends have been athletes their entire life. I, I was a rugby player for a good chunk of my life. And um, what I've noticed is somewhere around your mid thirties, early forties, almost every single one of my friends that has been active has had a major orthopedic injury, being the Achilles tendon, the knee back injury, et cetera. And, and that just tells me that our, our bodies our, our our minds are writing checks that our bodies can't cash. Right. And so I think an important concept here is understanding the risk of injury with exercise. So your body at age 47 is not going to be able to do the things you did at 27. So um, CrossFit is a fantastic fitness regimen, but it can also lead to injury if you don't know what you're doing and you're not, you're not uh, you know, under the right guidance. So I just want to counsel our patients listening here you know, listen to your bodies, be careful, you know, do things that are not going to overly stress your joints. I think when you can incorporate it into your lifestyle, it works best. I know, Sal, you, we were just talking about it. You surf three, four times a week, couple hours a day. That is, you know, amazingly strenuous exercise. I mean, I'm sure that if I try, you know, if anyone tries to surf several times, you know, a couple hours a day, that's, it's going to wipe them. So, if you incorporate that sort of stuff into your life, it can be any kind of activity. I think the biggest thing as we get older is recovery. So as we get into our 30s and 40s, the, the check writing that our bodies are doing is that we're not giving our time, ourselves time to recover. Yeah. Um, true, we don't true. build muscle and we don't gain fitness in the gym. We gain it outside the gym when we're resting and recovering. So one of the biggest things that I do, and I do coach CrossFit, is – for my um, older athletes, I tell them you need to watch out for everything else in your life. If you're going to stress yourself out in the gym, make sure your sleep is on point. Make sure you're getting your rest. Make sure you're doing all of your recovery and mobility stuff. And that's the only way. And and for some types of activity, you can keep up with a 20 year old for a short period of time. Just don't expect to do that every day or or at the same level of uh, you know frequency uh, that they can do. 
Yeah, totally agree with both of you, gentlemen. I think, you know, one of my older partners or one of my partners who's a, a really well-known plastic surgeon in his in his mid mid sixties, it's interesting to see how his exercise routine has changed over time. Yoga is the biggest focus of his entire exercise regimen is now because you know our bodies do change as we get older. It doesn't change the importance of exercising and taking care of ourselves, but you know, we do need to protect our, our, you know, we're, we're a machine just like any other machine. And when we've been around for a while, we can break down. And so you got to treat our, treat our bodies gent gently. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you, that's not, that's not really good. <laughs> Sounds like you almost do yoga. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two, I am too old to have plastic surgery. Yeah. I mean, I think, this is this is going to build on many of the other things that we've talked about. It's not about an absolute age. Uh, it's about health. And as there is increasing longevity in our population, um, there is a bigger desire to not look our stated age. And so I have many patients just in Dallas, just like you guys do in New Jersey and San Diego, who are in their 60s and their 70s, maybe even a few in their 80s, who are the picture of health. Ultimately, um, it's about how you feel and how you want to look, not your absolute age. Right. And, um, you know, for my older patients, particularly, you know, there's a, there's a larger elderly population in La Jolla here in San Diego. And, you know, a lot of them are interested in plastic surgery and they come in exactly with this question, which is, am I too old for this? And the short of it is, um, what I tell them is, you know, as long as your heart is healthy and your lungs are healthy and you're generally healthy, you know, the age is not a necessarily a factor, but to keep that in mind, we really want to have patients understand that they have to be healthy going into surgery. So every patient that I have that mo mostly every patient um, that I have that's going in for a, a facelift or a, or a larger procedure, I'm going to send to the primary care doctor. I may want a cardiac evaluation or a stress test to make sure they're going to be healthy enough to get through that surgery. Um, and I think that's where um, we separate ourselves as board certified plastic surgeons compared to uh, some of the other providers that may not be necessarily in tune to this. I mean, we want to, you know, first, we want to do no harm. We're doctors first, plastic surgeons second. Absolutely. I think um, studies have shown that older patients uh, do not suffer an increased risk for complications versus younger patients. Uh, except actually, interestingly, maybe for tummy tucks, maybe it was like a 1% like a increase in, in complications. But everything, uh, you know, like one, like two point something versus one point something. Um, but for everything else, uh, as Sam said, it's really about your health. Uh, you know, I would much rather have a 65 or 70 year old patient who is very healthy and fit uh, versus a 35 year old who was a heavy smoker who, um, you know, obese or had some other, you know, major health issues. It's really, you know, there's that whole thing about chronologic age versus physiologic age, and there's a little bit of a misnomer with that, but I, I think a lot of that is actually very, very true. Agreed. All right, and the last one, people fear aging. I don't see how this is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> people shouldn't fear aging. Because you can you can look great, you can be very healthy, you can have a very more fulfilling life than you did when you were younger because you have the experience of you have experience and you uh, but it doesn't mean people don't fear it. So I'm not really I'm going to I'm going to I think you guys may have a better answer for this one than me. Right, I think, um, you know, I just because something is intimidating in fact, I was just having this discussion with my nine-year-old son yesterday. Just because something is intimidating doesn't mean you have to necessarily fear it, but you have to respect it. And we were having this discussion about the ocean. I took him out surfing yesterday. We, he hit a couple big waves. He was freaking out. He was scared out of his mind. And I said, you know, you just have to respect the ocean. You don't have to fear it. Okay. And I think the same thing goes with aging. Um, how do you respect aging? You keep yourself healthy. You keep seeing the doctor. You you get tests that are appropriate. Okay. You eat the right things. You stay healthy. You don't have to fear aging, but there's a lot of good things that come with aging. Knowledge comes with aging. Experience comes with aging. You know. I think um, most of the patients that I uh, see 
are actually very happy and satisfied with their lives. And maybe even more so as they get older, because as Sam says, more experience. Um, and they like, they wouldn't trade their experiences for anything. I think most of the uh, people who are older are very positive. What they don't like is their physical signs of aging, where their appearance does not match how they feel about themselves inside. So it's not necessarily that they fear aging, but they just don't like that they don't look the way they feel. And But I will say that most of my patients um, are very, very, very happy in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, they're very positive. I don't think they fear anything. They just want to look better about it. Here, here. No, that well said. And I think that is so true. Um, so true. And with that, we are at the 35 minute mark, gentlemen. Perfectly timed show as always. <laughs> it would have been faster if we didn't have three minutes of uh, ragging on Sal for his uh, spaceman uh, appearance. Well, I'm just happy to hear that he's going to have a new webcam by the time we film another episode. That's going to be great. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you much. Uh, thank you again, uh, as always, for you guys. And uh, have a great day and enjoy wherever you are. Um, take care, guys. Stay safe in zero gravity, Dr. Pachella. <laughs>